Today, we're going to talk about how intermolecular forces help determine the properties of different substances. The properties we'll be talking about today are boiling point and melting point, enthalpy of vaporization and of fusion, vapor pressure, viscosity, and surface tension. As we discussed in the previous video, Intermolecular forces are the Coulombic interactions, the electrostatic attractions between molecules or between ions and molecules, or between some atoms, such as noble gases. There are several different types. Some types, like ion dipole and hydrogen bonding, tend to be very strong. Other types, like London dispersion forces, tend to be weaker. But in addition to the type of intermolecular attractions, factors like molecular size, contact area, shape, and presence or absence of pi bonding can also affect the strength of these attractions. Intermolecular forces are not bonds. Please do not call them bonds. They are intermolecular attractions. The strength of the intermolecular force affects the physical properties. Let's start by looking at melting point, boiling point, enthalpy of vaporization, and enthalpy of fusion. As you probably know, it takes energy to change a substance from a solid to a liquid, and from a liquid to a gas. A lot of this energy comes from the energy required to overcome the intermolecular attractions between molecules. The stronger the intermolecular attractions are, the higher the melting point and boiling point are. The strength of the intermolecular forces in a substance is also related to the enthalpy of vaporization and the enthalpy of fusion of that substance. And this is the amount of energy you have to put in to overcome the intermolecular forces enough to change phase. Remember these graphs from honors chemistry where you have to put in heat or remove heat to change phase? That's what we're talking about here. And we'll look at that more when we study thermodynamics. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the more energy you have to put in to change a substance from a solid to a liquid. In other words, the higher the enthalpy of fusion. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the more energy you have to put in to change from a liquid to a gas. In other words, the higher the enthalpy of vaporization. Let's see this in action. On the left, we have 50 grams of ice. On the right, we have 50 grams of ethanol. Although both of these can form hydrogen bonds, water can form more of them than ethanol can. Each water molecule can form four hydrogen bonds. Each ethanol can only form two. So water has stronger intermolecular forces than ethanol does. In this simulation, we'll start at negative 20 degrees Celsius. Notice that ethanol is already in the liquid phase. In fact, it has a melting point of negative 114 degrees Celsius. However, water is still solid at this temperature. As we add heat, the water begins to melt. See the flat line where the temperature doesn't change? We're having to put in energy just to overcome those intermolecular forces that are keeping the water in the solid phase. The enthalpy of fusion for water is 6 kilojoules per mole. For ethanol, it was only 4.6 kilojoules per mole, so it didn't take as much energy to overcome those intermolecular forces and to change ethanol from a liquid to a gas. As we keep putting in more energy, we see that ethanol starts to boil sooner than water does. The boiling point of ethanol is 78.4 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. It's much higher, and this is what we would expect for a molecule with stronger intermolecular forces. Although it's difficult to tell from this simulation, it turns out that the enthalpy of vaporization, the energy needed to change phase from liquid to gas, is also higher for water than it is for ethanol. For water, it's about 40.7 kilojoules per mole, for ethanol, it's about 38.6 kilojoules per mole. We see this trend in boiling points with other types of intermolecular forces as well. This table shows how boiling points change depending on the intermolecular forces. Here, when we're talking about dominant intermolecular force, 
This relates to the fact that a molecule may have more than one intermolecular force at work. For example, every substance has London dispersion forces. We can see that methane has the weakest intermolecular forces since it only has London dispersion forces. Its boiling point is very low, negative 161 degrees Celsius. Chloromethane has stronger forces. In addition to London dispersion forces, it has dipole-dipole forces. The boiling point is higher than it is for methane. Methanol has hydrogen bonding, which is an extreme version of dipole-dipole. The boiling point for methanol is much higher than that of the other two molecules. In the next example, we're looking at boiling points in molecules that are all the same size, but that have different shapes. The more branching there is, the weaker the London dispersion forces are, and this is related to the fact that there's less contact area with other molecules and less opportunity for temporary dipoles to induce other temporary dipoles in the neighboring molecule. We see that the boiling point is lower in these molecules that have many branches than it is in the molecule that has no branches. Here are two more molecules that are the same size. One of these can form hydrogen bonds, but the other can't. The one that can form hydrogen bonds experiences stronger intramolecular forces and therefore has a higher boiling point. It takes more energy to overcome these hydrogen bonds and get the molecule into the gas phase. Now let's talk about vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is a liquid property and it's related to evaporation. Remember that all molecules have kinetic energy. And you may remember that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy in a sample of a substance. So let me emphasize this is average. That means that some molecules will be moving faster than average and some slower than average. There will always be a few molecules that have enough kinetic energy to overcome the attractive forces in a solid or liquid and escape into the gas phase. Say you have a sample of a substance, like a liquid or a solid, that is in contact with the environment. There are always going to be a few molecules that have enough energy to overcome the attractive forces and escape into the gas phase even if you're not at the boiling point. If this substance is in contact with the environment, eventually you'll get evaporation or sublimation. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the faster the molecules have to be moving in order to escape. With strong intermolecular forces, fewer molecules have the energy to escape into the gas phase. But what if we put our substance into a closed container? The same thing's going to happen. Some of the molecules will be moving fast enough to escape. Eventually, after bouncing against each other and the walls of the container and the surface of the liquid, some of the molecules will lose energy and come back. At first, there won't be many molecules in the gas phase in the closed container. But after a while, an equilibrium is reached where the number of molecules that break free into the gas phase is going to equal the number that come back. When the molecules are in the gas phase, they exert a certain amount of pressure on the container. And we call the pressure that is due to a particular gas in the container the partial pressure. When we reach equilibrium with equal numbers of molecules breaking free and coming back, we call this partial pressure the vapor pressure. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the lower the vapor pressure is. That's because it takes a lot more kinetic energy for molecules to break free. And when there are strong intermolecular forces, fewer molecules have enough energy to escape. And the vapor pressure is going to be very low. When intermolecular forces are weak, the vapor pressure is high. That's because it's easier for molecules to overcome the intermolecular forces. They do not need as much energy to do this. More of them can escape into the gas phase, and this creates a higher partial pressure. One thing you need to remember is that the vapor pressure trends are in the opposite direction of the boiling point trends. 
The weaker the intermolecular forces are, the lower the boiling point is and the higher the vapor pressure. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the boiling point is and the lower the vapor pressure. And that's because it takes more energy to overcome strong intermolecular forces. Now let's talk about viscosity. Viscosity is resistance to flow. In other words, the thickness of a liquid. Think of the difference between water and honey. Honey flows more slowly. We say that it's more viscous. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the viscosity. Viscosity decreases as you increase the temperature. Have you ever had warm maple syrup? It's less viscous than cold maple syrup is, and it soaks into your pancakes more quickly. Surface tension is also determined by intermolecular forces. It results from the net inward force experienced by the molecules on the surface of a liquid. They are pulling each other together. Surface tension is the phenomenon that causes water to bead up when it's in contact with nonpolar surfaces. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the greater the surface tension is. Take a look at water, for example. The hydrogen bonding results in very high surface tension. That's why insects can walk on it. In summary, the strength of intermolecular forces can affect physical properties. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the boiling point and melting point are. The heat of fusion and heat of vaporization are also higher in substances that have strong intermolecular forces because it takes more energy to change the substance from a liquid to a gas or from a solid to a liquid. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the lower the vapor pressure is. That's because it takes a lot more kinetic energy for molecules to break free. The stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the viscosity is. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the greater the surface tension.